What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Critiques. You know what time it is. No, no, this is more like TikTok time? Yeah, we'll go with that. And I'm going to be reacting to some of the best and worst tattoos I found on TikTok this week. So hang tight, hold on to your butts, and let's get started. And we're back. Before we get started, I want to thank Flash Friends so much for sponsoring this week's video. More on them later. For now, let's see what we've got. All right, so this first one looks like an owl with a skull on it, and it's in the ditch of an arm. And as it opens up, you can see the owl head comes off, and there's these little blood strains, and it looks so freaking cool. I love little interactive tattoos like this. And I've never really seen one work so well as this one. I've seen a lot of different like ladybugs and ditches where you, you know, open your arm and you'll see the ladybug's wings. But I think this concept is a really cool and original. And the tattoo itself is also done very well. So props to the artist. I think this is also a really good way to avoid a lot of details in the ditch. And for those of you who don't know, the ditch is the inside of your elbow or the back of your knee. The ditch is a spot where it doesn't heal the best. It doesn't feel the best. Uh, so again, I think this is a really good way around that. And I do think the tattoo itself Itself will heal better because of that unless they keep bending their arm like that to show their friends but it does look like this tattoo has a lot of really nice details the lines are pretty clean for the most part and it's got some nice variation of shading in there as well a little bit of stipple work a little bit of black shades it all comes together very nice and i do love that theo von mullet that the skull's rocking my bad i can't really tell what's going on with its tongue i know that's such a small detail but i'm just wondering why that little black line is there regardless of that little detail i do think this thing is fantastic and again excellent work by the artist all right next up we've got this little pink glitter grenade that is definitely i agree with the comment saying this is one of the better glitter tattoos i've probably ever seen and i do know amanda graves specializes in this kind of style and she does an excellent job with every single one she does it definitely takes a lot of patience to pull off a tattoo like this the outline itself probably took 20 30 minutes but the actual technique of laying in all those dots probably Probably took so long. It's just dot 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 I can't do that. Can you guys guess how many dots are in this tattoo? Leave a comment below. And if you're right, I'll send you a pineapple. I do think there are a couple small areas with squirrely lines, but for the most part, this tattoo is pretty well put together. I did notice that there are a couple sides of those squares that don't have any glitter on them, and I'm wondering if that was a technique choice. I wonder if that would look like there's too much glitter if those squares had been filled in, but I would be curious to see what it looks like. But again, I think this is a very unique and solid tattoo, so great job by the artist. All right, this one says, decided to brave a tattoo on my arm, and she's got a bunch of flowers and a butterfly on there, and let's see what happens. Woo! Oh my lord. Uh, this says the day after I had my tattoo. Generally, I would see infections like this pop up maybe three or four days after the tattoo. If it's happening this fast, Chances are it probably came from the studio, but you can never really tell. This could have been from overworking the tattoo. This could have been from going home and getting a lot of dog hair or pet dander in your tattoo. The artist could have used latex gloves and the client could have been allergic to latex and they had a reaction. Uh, they could have had a reaction to the ink. There's a lot of different reasons this can actually happen. So it's very hard or difficult to pinpoint where exactly it came from. But uh, that's nasty. Went all lumpy and started leaking, so sent pics to my doctor. Uh, yeah, I get some antibiotics in that thing. Looks like the hand is starting to swell. Uh, redness spread further on my arm. I was given antibiotics. Yep. The first best thing to do, unable to bend my arm. Yep, that's what happens. And there's the swelling of the hand. Yeah, man, I feel bad, but uh, well, I either hope it heals or falls off one of the two. Oh, I'm not gonna do another tattoo. Me knowing full well, I'll probably get another one in a few months. Most likely, um, I would probably just try a different artist just to see what happens. And if you catch another infection, it's probably you. Yeah, this looks like a really bad henna job. But uh, unfortunately, this one's not coming off. Or maybe it is in pieces. And I would absolutely love to see what this tattoo looks like now. It seems like this tattoo is from last year. So if you're watching this, send it on over. I'd love to see it. All right, now this next one is incredible. I've definitely seen this artist work all over the internet. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who it is, but uh, they do a lot of similar tattoos like this. The way the camera moves around the body just makes the tattoo look like it's moving. And it is crazy. Especially this one. I love all the blues with the dark, super realistic, detailed skull. And then you've got these little SpongeBob characters in there. So I think this tattoo is all around just badass. Working on a canvas this big, you've got so much room for all these little details. And the artist did just that. I don't think they lacked in any one spot of this tattoo in particular. 
every little bit of it looks realistic. Of course, unless it's a cartoon, then it looks like a cartoon, but you get the idea. And blue to me is one of the harder colors to work with. So again, more props to the artist. This thing is fantastic. I love the little door down there. It looks like it's SpongeBob's little door to his pineapple, but of course it's the skull. Great addition. And the little portholes where you've got little Gary hanging out at the top. And I really love the lighting that's coming out of the nose and around the skull. It's those extra details that just really make this thing pop. And I know that sternum had to hurt so bad. That's definitely one of my more painful spots. And I know it's a bit weird to be thinking about, but generally you would definitely see some sort of shape or protrusion from the nipple. And I don't know if these are photoshopped out or if the artist just did such a good job with this, uh, disguising it, but now I can't stop thinking about them. Where is this dude's nipples? Is Gary the nipple? Oh, damn. Oh, now I see the other nipple. That's good. And I'm not even sure if that's his left one. The right one, I could see. The left one might be to the right of Gary. And again, I think the artist did such a good job with covering those that it doesn't distract from the tattoo in any sort of way. And if anybody knows the name of this artist, please let me know in the comments below. All right, I wanna take a quick break to talk about this week's sponsor, Flash Friends. Flash Friends is a trading card system created by Crocodile Jackson, someone we actually featured on this channel last year. Croc Jackson curated these cards from over 40 different artists from around the world, handpicked for their creativity and unique style. And when I say unique, I mean some of these designs are unbelievable and you won't see them anywhere else. If you collected cards as a kid, then you already know that nostalgic feeling whether it be baseball cards, garbage bell kid cards, or Pokemon cards. To me, Flash Friends brings back that same feeling. When you open a new pack and you never really know what you're gonna get. Not only is it a blast to, well, collect them all, but each card has a rarity, ranging from common, uncommon, rare, all the way up to the ever elusive holographic ultra rare, like Fast Eddie. And if you're a completist like me, there is also a checklist that you can download from their website to make sure that you're not missing any. So do yourself a favor, head on over to flashfriendstradingcards.com and use promo code PONY15 for 15% off of any Flash Friends product. And just get yourself some really cool flash art. All right, back to the show. This one says, this week's tattoos and what I charged. $75, got what you paid for. $100, looks like a $75 tattoo. Uh, $160. I'm imagining that's for both of the tattoos being 80 a piece. I worry about these little tattoos because I don't think that red is going to stay very red forever and it's probably going to fade out. Same thing with those green vines coming off the back of the flowers. I really don't see this tattoo standing the test of time. And what do we got next? I mean, is this a salamander or a newt? I guess I don't know the difference, but uh, it definitely looks like an amphibian. $100. Oh, you got both of them. Okay. I was going to say if you pay. Oh no, you got three of them. All right, I was gonna say if you paid $100 just for the one newt, you probably got ripped off, but you got ripped off three times. So honestly, price-wise, if this were me making these tattoos, I would probably be making these tattoos as an apprentice. So I would be giving them away for free, if not 25, 50 bucks. I don't think these tattoos are good enough to qualify for professional pricing. And what I mean by that is these kind of look like practice tattoos. So that's just what I would be charging, practice prices. The prices for the size for a good tattoo isn't bad. Uh, but again, I just think these tattoos don't really hold up to call them very well done tattoos. But I do know it costs money to make a tattoo. That's why I would probably charge 25, 50 bucks. But I think if you're charging $100 plus, your line work should be pretty spot on. And this is just not. And if you're gonna tattoo three little newts on the arm, shave the whole f***ing arm. Don't leave little hair patches on his arm. That looks silly. Again, this is just something apprentices do. Make sure you shave the entire area completely. It's also good for when you bandage the tattoo. It's not gonna catch any of those hairs and your client's not gonna curse you out later. I read the first comment, it says, should be charging apprenticeship rates. This one says, shouldn't do that. <laughs> one thing to remember kids, a good tattoo's not cheap and a cheap tattoo's not good. Next, this kid's no more than 14 years old. All right, maybe 17. He looks awful young. And what is he getting, a radio head tattoo? Oh, that thing's pretty dope. The line work is very solid. Great tattoo. It just trips me out seeing somebody so young in a tattoo chair. I mean, the kid's obviously got some cool parents uh, allowing him to get a tattoo at such a young age and listening to Radiohead, you know he's not learning that from his friends. And a Slipknot shirt, How is Slipknot still around? You're getting a Radiohead tattoo while wearing a Slipknot shirt. I don't know if you're depressed or just angry. And your tattoo's crying, so it makes sense. It, apparently there's a lot of angst going on here. I was just having this discussion with a friend the other day if we would allow our kids to get tattoos. Well, I don't have any kids, but he was wondering at what age his kids should get tattooed at. And if I would allow my kids to get tattooed,
do it at the age of 16. And I probably would, otherwise they're gonna end up going somewhere else and getting a shitty tattoo from somebody in their home. You're gonna end up like the other girl with the butterfly tattoo. My biggest concern, of course, is them regretting it later on in life. However, I would rather them regret a well done tattoo than a shitty tattoo. But at least he went to a good artist to get that done because again, these lines are very clean. I'm sure this will probably start an addiction for this kid and he'll probably be filled up by the time he's 15. This is definitely one of the more emo tattoos a high schooler can get. The black frame glasses really aren't helping, but a solid tattoo nonetheless. All right, this next tattoo is generally something that I'm not really a huge fan of, and that's mixing a black and white tattoo with just a little splash of color. Sometimes the artist can pull it off. Most of the time, I just generally find it a little annoying. In this case, the eyes do look great. I love the blues in the eyes, but again, I'm still not a fan of uh, this tattoo in general, especially the lion with the blue eyes. I mean, come on, guys. I think we all know exactly the type of person that has this tattoo. I'm sure you all know somebody that has this tattoo. It might be you. So although this tattoo is done very well, to me it is just extremely boring because I've seen it, I don't know, 100,000 times. The only thing this tattoo is missing is a crown and a pocket watch. And then we'll have the full alpha male experience. All right, now this one is definitely more my style. Most of the color with a little bit of black and white. The color isn't taking away from the black and white tattoo in this case. And these roses are so smooth. And again, blue is very difficult to tattoo with. So I think the tattooer did an excellent job here. It almost feels like you could reach in and feel the bends of those rose petals. And the composition is great. It's beautiful to look at. It fits the body well. Going back to the black and gray in this tattoo, it actually just helps that color really pop. Now, of course, roses are done all the time as well, but you can make a rose look so many different ways compared to a lion where they just look like a lion. Great job once again by the artist. And here she is. Who messing with it? Not me. Uh-uh. I don't like it. Well, first of all, this tattoo looks completely washed out from the get. And secondly, it looks like the contrast was boosted quite a bit because I know her skin's not that orange. But the artist probably did it to make those pinks even more pink. Now, hear me out. If this tattooer wouldn't have boosted the contrast so much in this video, I think it would have really helped them in the long run. Because the pink being on a hand, it's already going to fade. So if you compared a healed photo to this photo, those pinks are gonna be dramatically different. So I think it's better for the artist to be posting honest photos and videos of what their work actually looks like. That way it wouldn't be such a dramatic difference when you see a healed photo or see it in person. The other thing I wonder if this video had its contrast boosted and made those pinks a lot more vivid, why didn't it make those blacks darker? Which makes me wonder if the tattoo is that washed out. And the design itself is just, uh, a lot of images jumbled together. This is like all the things that you learn in your apprenticeship put into one tattoo. Or as we like to say, 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. You've got these skeleton fingers, you've got the skull face, the butterfly, the flowers, and those little flames just above the skeleton fingers. So there's a lot going on here. So good luck with that hand job and I wish you the best. All right, next up it, oh, look at that. It's the same exact tattoo. Gee, who would have thought? And this is why tattooers a lot of times don't like tattooing lions because it's just the same repetitive shit over and over and over again. And they're really not that creative, to be honest. Oh boy, I got a lion tattoo. I'm the king of the jungle. Oh. What jungle are you from, bro? I mean, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised. You've got the same exact crosses, the same exact negative spaces at the top. This is literally the same exact tattoo to a T. All right, for those of you out there who want a lion tattoo, don't go out and copy the very first Pinterest lion you see. And don't allow your artist to copy the very first Pinterest lion they see. It's not that hard to make a tattoo like this original in some sort of way. Granted, this tattoo is done well. I just can't with lions anymore. And if you guys are trying to get the true king of the jungle, get a hippo tattoo. They are the true kings of the jungle. In reality though, Ryan, I don't know if you knew that or not but they are. They will, they will up anybody. They'll put a line in a heartbeat. Next. All right, and here we have a, oh, a seven-year-old tattooing their mom. I'm calling the health department. I believe you need a license for that, miss. And what are you doing with a Wolverine on your workstation? That's so unsanitary. Um, I'm drawing <laughs> booty Her booty crack with underwear. Oh man, and she's clever. She's got a future. This is adorable. And what a cute machine. I've never seen a, a toy like that before. I've seen like really crappy tattoo machine toys, but never one that actually works. Um, so I'd be curious to know what that is and I'd love to buy it for all my relatives. Keep it up and maybe I'll see your work in 15, 20 years. This one says, all my tattoo people out there, is this normal? Oh, uh, well, tattoos are definitely supposed to peel, but that looks like you peeled the lines right off. It definitely looks like it's healing a bit rough. Uh, and I'm not sure why that is. Maybe there's a small infection under there that's pushing this out. And you probably shouldn't be picking at it for one. That could be how it got infected to begin with. But it definitely doesn't look like that tattoo's coming back. And if it does, it'll probably be very faded. 
which could be good in this case. To me, it definitely looks like they've been scratching at their tattoo. That's why they've got some red spots and some uh, pieces of skin peeling up. But I'm no doctor, but that's definitely what it looks like. You definitely gotta leave your tattoos alone during the healing process because you can actually peel out the ink like this person's doing here. Until the tattoo is completely settled, don't touch it unless you're washing it. That's it. But again, since it is so light, consider that a good thing. You can have a good tattooer go back over it and redo what you had or just completely cover it altogether. I just don't know if I'd go back to that particular artist. And if you are one of those people that love to pick at their skin, maybe tattoos aren't for you. All right, that's gonna wrap it up this week, but thank you guys so much for joining me. I had an absolute blast and it was great to see some decent tattoos on TikTok for once. While you're here, please subscribe and don't forget to check out Flash Friends. They are super dope and you will be happy you did. And as always, I will see you all next week.